welcome or welcome back to my channel. So since Caspa is right around the corner, I thought I would do a video on how to format your experiences. So let's begin this by saying what categories your experiences can even fall under. So some examples are patient care, healthcare, volunteering, shadowing, researching, leadership, all of those typical you know, categories that you would expect on Caspa. You select which one your experience falls under. Also in your experience, you will include whether it was compensated, you received academic credit for it, or if it was a volunteer. So say you are a volunteer physical therapy aide, although it is patient care experience, you will also click a box that says it's volunteer. So it'll be like counted as both patient care, but also as volunteer. But know that you cannot double dip on your hours. So say you're a medical assistant and half the time you're at front office and half the time you're back office. So front office is more paperwork, so that's healthcare, whereas back office is more vaccines and whatnot, so that's more patient care. So say you work there for 2,000 hours. You can't say 2,000 hours for both healthcare and patient care, so you have to split it up half and half. Obviously, if it was more 60-40, then you would split that up accordingly, but if it's half and half, you do 1,000 healthcare and 1,000 patient care. So do not double dip in your hours and use the same hours for multiple experiences. That is a big no-no and a big red flag to the schools. So I know another big problem that people have when inputting their experiences into CASPA is to calculating their total hours. So oftentimes you'll have a date range that is much larger than the time you worked. So for example, if you volunteered at a run yearly and you volunteered for three years, but you really only worked one day out of those three years, you would put your date range as those three years, but you would put you only worked three weeks. Then for your average hours, you would put the amount of hours you would work at that event during that one day. So this shows to the missions committee that you were committed to this walk for three separate years, but you only worked one day per year, which is the day of the walk. So similarly, I worked as a CNA for only two summers, but I put the date range as the two years that I worked, then I put the accurate number of weeks that I worked, and then I kind of played with the number of average you know, weekly hours until I got my accurate total hours. So at the end of it, your average hours may not really be what your average hours really were, but as long as you have the accurate amount of weeks worked, and the most important part is the accurate amount of total hours, then you're good. So the main takeaway from that should be that your total hours should be the most accurate out of those three numbers. All right, so on to how you format and word your experiences. So there are like two main options, one being bullet points and the other being paragraph form. Both are accurate and you can't go wrong with either. However, it is super important that you are consistent. So if you start off with bullet points, you must end with bullet points. I personally chose a paragraph form because to me, I wanted my experiences to show more than just what I did. I also wanted to show like what I learned, including like soft skills, like communication and whatnot. So for me, the paragraph form really allowed me to do that and allowed it to flow a lot better than I thought bullet points would. However, I have seen people be able to include, you know, things aside from the roles that they learned in bullet points. So it's definitely doable. It's really personal opinion and what you think would show off, you know, what you learned and what you did best. There are mixed opinions out there as to whether your experience description should be just like blatant boom 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 so people can read through it fast or whether they should be more personal and make more connections and kind of show why you want to be a PA through your experiences. To me, I chose the latter option. I thought that this is just another opportunity to prove that I've learned a lot through my experiences. Also say what I did so they know that it counts as like patient care or whatever the experience I you know labeled it as. So I decided to include not just my skills such as like taking vitals and helping with bedpans and you know things I did as like a CNA and a PTA, but I also included soft skills and things I learned about the PA profession during my experiences. For example, as a scribe, I mentioned that I got to witness a patient-provider relationship and how that has inspired me to want to provide care when I'm a PA in the future. So you definitely don't have to include those things, but it is just another spot to kind of make an argument as to why you're going to be a great PA and what you've learned. So I think it's pretty helpful to include those types of things. So I thought it would be helpful to share one of my experiences. I'm not going to share any other ones than this. And it's really not good to copy somebody because your experience is so much different than somebody else's experience. So just make sure that you write these in your own words and your own experiences. But I also know it's super helpful to look at examples. So here is one of my uh, experience descriptions. All right, so I'm going to read it out to you. As a CNA, I provided residents with assistance in activities of daily living and taking vitals such as blood pressure, pulse, and intake and output. The ADLs I assisted with include, but are not limited to, bathing, grooming, feeding, toileting, and transferring. My role as a CNA included empathetic patient care, such as ensuring that the resident was comfortable and felt respected. This incorporated communicating with LVNs or RNs when the resident needed assistance that was out of my scope of practice. Additionally, I had to demonstrate HIPAA competency in order to protect residents' privacy. 
So you can see that I included my roles on like the things I actually did, such as helping with ADLs and taking vitals, but I also included how I worked with LVNs and RNs and other healthcare professionals and how I communicated with the patients and made sure that they felt respected and cared for. So not only did it show that I learned, you know, clinical roles and clinical duties, but I also learned bedside manner and really important people skills that we'll use as a PA. Again, this is just an example of how I did it. You do not need to do it like this. You can definitely do bullet points and break it down by that. This is just what I decided and what I thought would show my experiences the best. So overall, I'd say whether you do bullet points or whether you do paragraph form, just make sure that you include more than just the actual duties that you did. This helps make you a more well-rounded applicant and it will really show that you've learned a lot in your experiences. If you are applying to CASP with a cycle, I wish you the absolute best of luck. I know it is a stressful time and putting together your application isn't even the most stressful part. The most stressful part is waiting to hear back from the schools. I know how you feel. This whole process is super stressful. There's so much to do from, you know, the time you start applying to even up to your interviews. There's just so much stress and so much you feel like you need to get done. But trust me, it is manageable. Just take it day by day. Stay on top of your emails. Stay organized. Create spreadsheets. Just make sure you pay attention to deadlines and just re, you know, check over your CASP application. Make sure you don't have any small spelling errors or grammar errors. But just breathe. You'll be fine. You got this. If you have any questions on how to format your experiences or anything about CASPA, you can always message me on my Instagram at whitecoatchasing or leave a comment below. And if you're enjoying my videos and I'm helping you along your journey to PA school, please remember to like and subscribe. Getting new subscribers to me isn't about the numbers, it's showing me that you guys are actually enjoying my content and I'm actually helping you out and that's really what I want to do is just connect to you guys and make sure that I answer questions that you're really looking for. So I just want to make sure that I'm providing the content that you want and the content that you need to help you along your journey. So if you have any requests on any videos or want me to answer anything, you can always leave a comment below and let me know what you would like to see on my channel. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and hope you're staying safe. Bye.